I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to show you how to solder up that Emax Magnum Mini version two flight controller with the ESCs to your motors and all that good stuff. So this is gonna be kind of like a build tutorial for beginners. This is gonna be super easy. This would be great for your first build. So I'm gonna show you the best components to use on that as well. We're gonna use the Emax RS2 2206 2300 kV motor. So those things are super hot right now. And once you have all of your motor wires soldered up, they should look something like this. You wanna make sure that all your solder points look nice and shiny and they shouldn't bridge at all they shouldn't touch each other if they touch each other they might short out the next thing you're going to do is you're going to get some rubber grommets and you can find those on various fpv websites you're going to put those right above where the escs are you can put them below the escs or above it doesn't matter that way you have some dampening up to the flight controller because this is an f4 it is a little more sensitive than an f3 and a little bit tougher to tune and more sensitive to vibrations so once you have those on you can go ahead and put down your flight controller and you can take this little wire right here this is your signal harness right there you're going to plug that into flight controller just below those leds so now we're moving on to step four and we're going to use a jig i put my xt60 in this jig from hobby king and just tightened it down and what we're going to do is we're going to take our soldering iron we're going to fill up these two holes with solder the best we can and we're also going to get the wire nice and hot they're already pre-tinned from Emacs, so that's nice. You wanna make sure they touch and they make contact with the XT60 terminals. If not, you might get uh, sort of a cold solder look. If it looks cold, you want to redo it. Uh, you're also gonna use those pieces of heat shrink there. Now I have those both uh, nicely soldered on and be careful you don't overheat your XT60 connector because you'll feel those terminal, they'll start to, those terminals will start to twist around and move. And if they melt and turn a little bit, it's gonna be really hard to plug in your battery. Uh, so now I've got the heat shrink on there. I'm just gonna go ahead, take a little bit of flame and uh, sort of get that heat shrink to go down on the wire. Sort of overdid it there a little bit, but that's okay on that side too. So I'm gonna do it on both sides. Now that's all done, we're going to solder on the end of the wire right here to our 4-in-1 ESC. So step five is pretty easy. Now that we have the XT60 soldered up and those heat shrinks look good there, we can tuck these wires down beside the quad. This is the way I'm running them because I don't want them sticking out the side. I want them running through the back and I'm gonna put a zip tie back here to secure this so it doesn't pull on the 4-in-1 ESC if my battery ejects from the quad because sticking out from the side right there is gonna be pretty dangerous for that type of setup. That's kind of, kind of close to the edge of that quad, so this would be a better option. Now in step six, you're gonna solder up your camera wires and your receiver wires down to the top of your flight controller, and they're gonna look just like this. You see right here, I have my signal wire, my five volt wire, and my ground wire there for the camera, and that's gonna lead up to the Predator. You can see that zoom in there just a little closer. You can see VN right there, and down here where S bus is gonna be for the receiver, you're gonna have your signal wire up top, your five volt in the middle, and your ground on the very bottom gonna push on that harness down there just to make sure everything is nice and tight there. So now we have the camera and the receiver on there. We can move on to the next step. So now for step seven, we're gonna add that Emacs video transmitter on the top of the stack. Put those two nuts there and these two posts here and just go ahead and plug in these four pins to the harness. And that's all there really is to putting on the VTX. It's pretty simple. So for new guys, this is really, really easy. Just press that down until it feels flat and you're pretty much good to go. Now all you need to do is plug in your tiny UFL connector right there on that spot. And I'm gonna show you what to do to secure that to the VTX. So now that I've got everything loaded up in the stack, I have everything placed inside there. I put that little tiny UFL connector on there and added just a little bit of hot glue on there. You guys might be able to see the dab right there. And then I ran a zip tie right behind it because you wanna secure those antennas to the side of your frame. That way, where it's connected to your VTX doesn't move because the moment that this antenna wire going up to that connector right there moves, it's going to pop off that VTX. Uh, these smaller connectors are notorious for just popping off whenever you just slightly move them. So you want to secure it further down the line and go ahead and add a little bit of hot glue there and that'll, that'll have it nice and secure for your frame. So when you're putting this one together, by the way, if you choose to do this frame, I'm not gonna recommend this for the total beginners. This is probably gonna be your second or third quad build because you know, you're gonna have to do all that 
before you put this top plate on because if you do this first and then you try to plug this UFL connector in, it's gonna be a giant biatch to get it on there. So um, make sure you snap that down, put your zip tie there, and then go ahead and uh, secure it down. Make sure these tabs are all the way through on that bottom plate right there like you see here. Uh, but otherwise, I'm pretty much good to go now. I have my receiver up there. There is a second shelf inside this frame, which is pretty cool. And they give you an option to either run this piece of TPU across the top, like I have here, this blue piece, which is going to look kind of cool because those LEDs are going to light up and kind of make it shine. But they give you another carbon piece that fits right in the back right here. It actually has a hole just like this has. So you can run the antenna mount there on the very back if you want to. So uh, two different options with this frame from iFlight, which is pretty cool. So now I'm going to uh, go ahead and plug in a battery. I hope it doesn't smoke. Don't see a white puff of smoke come out of this setup. And after that, we're going to bind it up to my Tyrannus X10S and go out and do a test flight. See how it flies. So I just wanted to show you guys everything checked out in here and it's not smoking, which is great. Everything is in there pretty tidy from front to back. So also, if you do get this frame, you're gonna to wanna to put zip ties on these two holes right here. You can see them one on this side and one on that side. And that way it'll be outside of where this top plate is because on this top plate, which is where your run cam micro is gonna go or any type of sort of a nice 4K cam on top there. So you got a pretty good amount of tilt on top of that frame, maybe like 35 to 40 degrees worth of tilt. So plenty of tilt there for uh, freestyle. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of this together. I'm gonna put these four bolts on the very top to hold that top plate down and that whole top assembly. And after that, we're gonna put some props on it and we'll go out and fly, guys. But let's go ahead and uh, put this quad down now that you've got to check it out as much as you have. And let's go ahead and um, try to just slow down and enjoy the scenery out there today because it's awesome out there. It's really beautiful. So enjoy the flight, guys, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.